we learnt is some of the things. For example, you are given a problem, given a problem, you need to be good at or given a business problem, right? That you need to build a, a business, given a business problem, right? You need to be very, very critical. And these things, trust me, are going to define how good you are in data science. The first of these things is what kind of data do I need? Who's going to define this? Because when say people, when newbies enter, when I entered the field of machine learning and data science uh, in 2014, I was like, this is an amazing field. I love this because it is math, it has computer science, etc. What I did not realize for some time is that the biggest challenge always is that answering some of these questions, what kind of data do I need, right? Where do I get this data from, right? Data from. Now, if you, for example, are working in BFSI in a bank like Barclays, JP Morgan, do you think it is going to be very easy for you to, if so you say that, you know, you go to, the, you go to your uh, uh, head of uh, whatever, and you say that I need uh, uh, data of my uh, customers at Barclays or JP Morgan. Do you think it is going to be that easy? Because all of these banks have compliances that they need to follow, right? And nobody is going to give you that data that easily, right? Because that data is very, 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 very sensitive, right? So where do I get this data from, right? How do I mask this data, right? What compliances do I need to go through to uh, make sure that this data is great? Then if I have data, what volume and what structure do I need the data in, right? Do Then after that, how do I clean this data? How do I clean this data, right? How do I manipulate this data, right? Uh, you Then you have, this is where your, uh, uh, sorry, uh, manipulate this data. This is where your Python libraries like pandas, numpy, etc., cetera, uh, come into picture. This is where, uh, where do I get this data? Mass, you, you, you have to go through compliances. This is, this is where your concepts like web scraping comes into picture wherein you're logging into websites and you're scraping the websites to get the data, this data, right? Uh, Any one of you would want to do web scraping live because possibly I would ask Suchit Majumdar, who's our chief data scientist to do a live web scraping through which you can go to any portal, even Flipkart and Amazon and scrape website or scrape uh, Flipkart and Amazon live using some of the, these uh, web scraping uh, technologies like beautiful libraries or packages like beautiful uh, soup, etc. Right. So do you guys see that? Uh, can you guys first of all, see how important it is now? And do you guys have now a more real world picture about how, why data is important? Uh, if say Manav is saying that data is very important now, is it finally clear to everyone that why is data very, very important? Give me a quick yes. If this is absolutely now clear to you before uh, I move forward, right? Awesome, right? So these are the, some of the challenges or the things that you need to think about as a data scientist, which will make you really, really uh, great in this space. Uh, the second part is the algorithms part. Think of algorithms as the brain of the machine, right? Now, one mistake that I would want you guys to uh, steer clear of is that whenever people are doing machine learning, they always take this approach that they say that this is the data. Let me apply the uh, machine learning algorithm in it. And remember yesterday also in the case study, 70% of you got it wrong not because you could not understand the algorithms, but what was the challenge in yesterday's case study? If you remember, the challenge was that you guys did not focus on the end output, end goal. Do you guys remember that point? End goal was something that you guys missed. You guys were focused on the algorithms when we were doing the case study. And this is the second big takeaway that I want you to take away from today's session that whenever we are doing machine learning, do not take this approach, right? Always take a backward, uh, a backward approach, wherein you're looking at the problem statement first. What is the end output? What is that I need to do? And then you're, you're selecting the right algorithm to solve that particular business problem.
Give me a quick yes if this is absolutely clear to you that what approach needs to be taken in machine learning and if after today you will never ever make this mistake that you are choosing algorithms because you are you are like okay this seems to be correct classification somebody was writing classification and somebody was writing uh, anomaly detection and somebody was writing reinforcement learning but only if you would have thought about that the end goal is can you predict the time in which the machine will frame, frame down it was a very simple numerical prediction problem and this is one weapon that you always need to have with you that you always remember the end goal if you remember the end goal trust me nobody can you'll never ever fail in machine learning right so so these two components data and algorithms are the heart of uh, machine learning and these whatever insights i've just given you just remember these insights and you should be pretty good right so uh, now let's move to machine learning algorithms and but before we move there let me know if you are doing fine if you are if you guys are here with me and again if you are listening to me attentively if you guys are enjoying and if all of these things that we are uh, i'm discussing with you if you are uh, able to connect the dots with each other right yes we are with you and uh, uh, absolutely great all right now big thumbs up okay kalyan writes a big thumbs up love that yeah now let's move to the more exciting part of today's session and uh, now we have said the basics correct now let's get the uh, some of the more complicated terms uh, uh, um, some some of the more complicated terms uh, correct now in machine learning there are two types of machine learning algorithms that you need to know about right and listen to this part very closely because Uh, i have interviewed a lot of lot of people in the space and this is even and then a lot of people who write a lot of buzzwords in their resume even get this thing wrong and if you are listening correctly you will already have a head start right so there are two type of machine learning algorithms that are primarily used to solve most of the industry problem there are more obviously but they are they with these two types of algorithms will help you figure out or solve 90% of the problem statements that that will come uh, come to you as a data scientist and these categories of machine learning algorithms are first is called supervised learning and second is called unsupervised learning now what do these mean let's look at into this now in supervised learning what you have is you have an input x and you have an output y in unsupervised learning you have an input x but you don't have an output y let me just repeat you have an input x but you don't have an output y now your question would be mano how is that possible that a machine learning algorithm does not have an output now let's look at that now let me just give you a a, a simple example now if i want you to predict uh, uh, whether uh, it will rain tomorrow right say uh, tomorrow right is this super is this unsup is the supervised algorithm or not what do you think can this problem be solved using supervised learning or not whether it will rain tomorrow or not right um yes yes why and if yes what do you think will be the input factors here what will be th- what do you think will be the input factors here and what do you think will be the output here i want you guys to think about both the x parameters and the y parameter what is the y parameter here what is the dependent variable if you remember from yesterday session we had learned here what is exactly the dependent variable here and what is what are the independent variables here let's talk more in terms of machine learning algorithm uh, uh, language yeah so a uh, very good the div- independent variables here will be uh, humidity weather forecast la- historical uh, historical uh, what you call that uh, temperature blah 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 and output here is going to be yes or no does the, are, are you guys clear with this amazing answers very good right so this is clear uh, clear uh, example of yeah, of supervised learning right now in unsupervised learning what happens is uh, is you have an input but you don't have output right now what does it mean now let's take an example that 
let's say that uh, you have a spread your let's take a healthcare case study and you have a zika virus uh, um, uh, epidemic right and you have these patients p1 p2 p3 uh, p4 uh, p5 right and all of these patients now are infected uh, uh, and they are categorized as infected not infected right infected not infected right now what i need to do is i need to categorize uh, people uh, who are infected and i want to see if there are, is any correlation between these people and if there is any similarity between these people right people who are infected right so when is this supervised learning or is this unsupervised learning uh all right okay uh unsupervised very good right super right uh is this is uh, unsupervised question shraddha i'll take your question uh, in a in a while your question uh, i'll just answer that in a while yeah so this is unsupervised learning because here i am not predicting whether this cus whether this patient is uh, suffering from zika virus uh, or not all i am doing is i am trying to form cluster that this is uh, uh this is uh this is infected this is not infected and then what what are some of the patterns that i will try to see here what are some of the questions as a data scientist i will try to look what are some of the questions critical uh uh questions or patterns that i would try to de de derive what do you think are some of the questions that i would try to look for here you are the data scientist and i want you guys to tell me what are some of the questions that you would want to get answered once you have determined that these are these are infected patients p1 p3 p7 uh, p10 very good pranay writes uh, common symptoms very good right when they got affected pu writes from where they have come amazing right what else what else is there any correlation or is there any similarity in their age what do you think does that make sense right possibly they are children possibly they are adults possibly they are old people right possibly they are from a particular geography ravi shankar writes a uh, very good uh, possibly they visited a particular country and they got infected from zika virus from there right now do you see that what kind of uh, things are happening here in unsupervised learning what you have is you try to club people and then you try to look for correlations there right are these examples making sense are you guys clear with supervised and unsupervised algorithms because now i'm going to quiz quiz you more and i want to see whether you are clear uh, with this or not right now let me just you know give you a question uh uh what will be uh what will be uh pushes salary in 2022 supervised or unsupervised learning what kind of machine learning algorithm will be solved for supervised let's just write sl and unsupervised like uh, ul yeah you can write it like that right supervised very good uh, uh sl sl very good now uh, now let's say that uh, modi government wants to has 1000 crore fund and it wants to release it to the most poor uh, districts in india most poor districts in india and there are very obviously all of these poor districts will have uh, various problems that they will have sanitation problem they will have uh, unemployment problem and modi government now wants to find out what is the common thing between all of these district poorest districts in india and it wants to then deploy this 1000 crore out of these 1000 crore they want to uh, put 700 crore in the highest uh cat in the highest uh, uh, problem area on Un sanitation unemployment or anything else right so unsupervised algorithm very good right super i think's making sense and is it exciting are you guys getting the sense of how this is used in real world i am trying to take all of these uh, real world examples so that you guys enjoy it and more importantly you are able to see beyond the theory how is this relevant and how is this applied in real world yeah okay now let's look at uh, unsupervised algorithm learning a little bit more and let's dig dig a little deeper into 
unsupervised supervised learning first right supervised learning has two types two types first type is called uh, is, is used for classification and second is used for regression now what does that mean whenever i want to classify things right apples oranges i whenever i want to say uh, classify things that i have given a list of people and now i have to classify uh, people for example japanese americans etc i use classification right whenever i want to do uh, whenever i want to predict something which is continuous in nature i the category of machine learning algorithm that i use is uh, regression let's take an example will modi be elected will trump be elected to the white house in 2020 what kind of machine learning algorithm uh, will be uh, used here will trump be elected supervised learning but beyond supervised learning what category regression or classification right classification no morning monica is writing regression no it will not be regression uh, it will be classification now some of you would be a little confused let me give you a quick framework to help you figure out and remember this magic wand this magic wand will never ever make you go wrong with classification classification listen to this attentively will always give you binary results binary results you always get one zero true false and uh, what else yes no these are the only three type of results you will get so will trump be elected to the white house in 2020 what will be your answer here if i ask you this question right it will be yes or no right yes if you believe or no you don't believe right so classification will get, give you right similarly the the example that we uh, took uh, pranay writes big no right so i don't know i don't know so i am not commenting on that uh, could be yes could be no right similarly the example that we took uh, some time back will stock market will indian stock market uh, be higher or lower in 2019 right again what what is the category here i have classification because i am saying yes or no but if i ask you what will be a uh, stock where will stock market be as on uh, january 1 2019 clustering classification regression where will stock market be as on january 2019 right regression right awesome very good so the easy way now is this point clear to everyone and are you guys now feeling more powerful that you know some of these things some of these things which are very very important and very very basics of machine learning right uh, so whenever you want to uh, predict something in binary you will use classification whenever you will want to predict something which is what which is continuous in nature you will use a uh, regression right for example if i want to predict uh, what will be vikas salary in 2025 again in supervised learning i will use regression type of algorithm right and now does this make sense why we used linear regression yesterday in yesterday's case study we used linear regression because we were trying to predict a continuous variable there yeah now in real world another important uh, uh uh another important thing that you will need to remember is that when i said that sometime back that in real world you should always work backwards in machine learning not forward now what does that mean is we will see here that a lot of time when you would as a newbie data scientist when you will try you are trying to get into data science you will be given a data set right and then on the data set you should never ever think that uh, this is other data set and this is the kind of uh, problem this is the kind of algorithm uh, that uh, will be used on the same kind of data set you could possibly use two different categories of algorithms right two different cat categories of algorithm now let's see let's see how will you use two different categories of algorithms right now if i'm if uh, i am giving you these uh, uh this data of patients uh, let's say uh, uh cancer patient i am giving you cancer scans right cancer scans of patients and you would note that today 
machine learning and ai is being used to uh, uh, diagnose cancer also very very early on and these patients have their scan say uh, uh, this uh, patient is suffering from uh, cancer right patient is not suffering from cancer patient is suffering from cancer patient is not suffering from cancer patient is suffering from cancer now i want you guys to think a little bit and tell me that uh if i have this data of patients till all the way till 100 or 1000 whatever your data set you want to take that does not matter i'm just taking some sample if i want to predict for 1001 patient whether this 1001 patient is suffering from cancer or not what kind of machine learning algorithm uh, uh, would you use here right yeah uh regression clustering classification now you would see that all of these things come into picture again and that's that was my objective through this case study to confuse you right because when you are looking at things in in their isolation they seem all easy but the moment you are given a case study it becomes very confusing and i want again you i want you to use the same framework that we discussed some time back right look at the end objective right what is my goal here 1001 custom uh, patient what do i need to do i need to predict what do i the moment i need to predict what category of algorithm will it be supervised or unsupervised unsupervised what when, whenever we talk about prediction do we use supervised or do we use unsupervised supervised very good that's the first first clear answer because in unsupervised we never try to predict anything right we try to cluster we try to group yeah now 1001 customer is we are saying whether this patient suffers from cancer or not obviously the answer has to be yes or no right so where where does classify or regression comes into come come into picture it is a classification problem now on the same very data set i want now you guys to let me know how would you use how would you use clustering in the same data set let me see if you guys are using your uh, are are actually connecting all of these things that i'm telling you and let me see if that is making sense to you guys on this very same same data set now i've used classification on the very same data set how would i use clustering and in what kind of context yeah uh very good again all you will do is the same thing that we discussed this did with the zika virus case study right we will want to see that uh, can we make segments very good can we make clusters right very good you would look at the geographical locations right you would look at the common symptoms you would look at the age categories you would possibly look at the uh, duration at uh, for which the cancer actually spread you would look at this eating smoking habits as few sites we look at a uh, common themes right now does this make sense to you to every everyone that on the same data set you would use in the real world as a data scientist on the same data set you would use multiple different categories of algorithms depending on what your what you want to do give me a quick yes if this point is absolutely clear to you same data set different problem statements different algorithms different uh, different uh, uh, outputs yeah the data set however remains the same now there is another category of machine learning algorithms that uh, you you need to know about so i think classification would be clear regression would be clear now we have learned supervised also now we have learned unsupervised also we have learned clustering also in a short duration of 30 minutes to 40 minutes you have learned so many things right and uh, and and what i'm happy about is that all of you guys are so interactive uh, that it's is 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 just amazing yeah so let's look at the last category of unsupervised learning called association rule this is very often used in e-commerce industry uh, and with this i want to check with check with you guys how many of you are thinking about uh, getting into e-commerce companies like flipkart amazon shop clues or uh, some of these 
uh, e-commerce companies as possibly machine learning experts or data scientists or some of or some or in some of the other capacity oh okay so quite a few people right so if you've been thinking about this this is the algorithm that you need to really really nail very very well which is association rules because e-commerce industry totally works on association rules in the sense that apart you obviously use other things but the bread and butter of e-commerce industries is something called recommendation engines right can you guys give me quick examples of recommendation engines right you see it on amazon right you see it on flipkart you see uh, everywhere right you know what recommendation engine is now what happens in recommendation engines and why this is important in retail for example is that uh, when you are ordering say milk what is the next product that i would want to show you as amazon that's my big question and how do you go about solving this problem pay close attention because this is very very important if you are looking to become a data scientist in companies like amazon and how what is the what is the fundamentals of this if you get this right then it will all that uh, maths is very easy right now let me just ask you a question uh, that after if i have added if uh, i have added uh, milk to my basket what is the next most likely uh, product smruti writes uh, uh, bread uh vivek writes uh, after milk it would be tea uh let me just write all of these things somebody is writing after milk it will be sugar um sugar it can be anything else also i don't know i mean it can be butter right who knows right now what happens in this is now all of you see that all of us have different judgments right and all of us can be wrong or we can be right it totally is luck based so what you always do in association rules is you are trying to find relationship between product what is the probability of a customer ordering bread after milk and what you do is you have product associations in one column and you have probability of that association uh it's become a little small a uh, probability of that association in other row so you have say probability of uh, milk and bread combination 0.6 this is 0.7 uh, uh, 0.6 this can be 0.3 right and this can be let's say 0.2 right now does this seem easy does this seem intuitive let me know if this makes sense if you are doing it in this way right that now as amazon i know that what is the next type of product that i should recommend to customer it is not based on what i think but it is based on data right so what is the next product that i am now likely to show to the customer after he has or she has added a uh, milk right and i've just given these randomly it can be anything else also right it is bread now my question to you is that it is bread uh, uh, now the probability of milk bread combination is the highest but you would see milk is also not far behind milk is also very close 0.6 now as a data scientist i want you to think a little more critically and tell me what would i do with this 0.6 because 0.7 and 0.6 are pretty close to each other and there is a good probability that the customer might not add bread and she might actually add tea to the basket right show both very good so what i would do is i would try to ma make a combo so you would have seen those combos right so i, I would i would make a combo because i know that those combos will work and all of this is happening on autopilot now i don't need so when you see those combos on uh, amazon right M a lot of people think that they are amazon is making those combos where where those combos are being made by actual purchase uh, actual associations right so what i would do is i will show milk plus bread plus tea right or i would also i will show possibly milk plus bread in one of the recommendation and i would also say like customers who bought this also uh, bought this bought this i would show milk plus tea right so i can show different variations of the same thing right and this recommendation engine i cannot tell you how important this is 
uh, this is not only important in e-commerce because e-commerce is the biggest user of recommendation engine. I want you guys to tell me where else can you use recommendation engine? Where else can you use recommendation engine beyond e-commerce? Have you seen that being used by Facebook? Absolutely, right? Where else have you seen recommendation engine? Ankit, right? Facebook, shadi.com, all right. E-learning, uh, YouTube, right? Policy Bazaar, mutual fund suggestions, Nokri, right? Zomato, banking, absolutely, right? So there are different kind of recommendations that are are, are, are going on. And that's why companies like Big Basket uh, and Amazon, Amazon today has one of the biggest machine learning teams. Uh, any guesses how many people in work in Amazon on machine learning and data science and AI as a field, right? Uh, it's more than 5,000 people currently working in data science, machine learning uh, and AI in Amazon itself. Similarly, you have companies like Big Basket who are hiring uh, data scientists and, and data analysts uh, left, right and center. Uh, because these e-commerce companies know that they have a lot of data. They have a lot of lot of rich data that they are collecting and they need people who can make sense of this data. Yeah. So before we move to the final uh, final part, uh, let's look at the final uh, uh, final uh, question. Right. Uh, that I have uh, for you uh, before we move to the final part. Here you would see in this uh, beautiful uh, diagram that we have made is that you would see that there is something called process optimization. Why is it categorized under regression? What does process optimization have to do with regression? Think about it a little bit. Take your time and let me know. Uh, okay, to give optimal output after regression, Trinarize process is not a one-time activity, increase efficiency, which would work for any process. No, I want more precise answers. Anoop has given a pretty good answer. Continuous improvement might happen. Uh, okay, what else? It is a definite on continuous activity, right? That's the right answer. Uh, very good, some of you got it right. For example, what is process optimization is that you are feeding X inputs, for example, in supply chain. Right now, your delivery time, you, your, your delivery time is 90% of where you want it to be. And you want to take it to 95%, right? So on what basis this 90% is coming, right? Uh, this 90% is coming based on certain inputs, you're getting 90%. When you change the inputs, then you get it to 95%, right? So you have regressors as different parameter. It can be shipping time, it can be packaging time, it can be multiple, multiple times when you are looking at in, in context of e-commerce companies and you are improving it over a period of time, right? So this is a continuous process that keeps on going on. Now, most of the problems that you'll actually be getting in the industry, they will actually get solved by these two types of algorithm, uh, categories of algorithm called supervised and unsupervised algorithm. 90% of the problems that you're actually going to encounter in real world, they will get solved by this category of algorithm. Now, there is something which is, uh, which is very, very interesting, which, is, uh, which moves towards AI. And my question is, how many of you are all interested in uh, artificial intelligence? Because uh, then I would want to talk very quickly a little bit about reinforcement learning. Uh, apart from machine learning and data science, how many of you have interest in artificial intelligence and you see yourself uh, making your career in artificial intelligence? Because this is my area of research currently, machine vision, uh, as I mentioned, and uh, uh, I started with uh, unsupervised learning regression and all of these uh, areas, but uh, currently this is what I think is uh, the future is. And uh, I quickly talk a little bit about that, but with, with, the, with the rider that 90% of the problems that you'll actually be working in the industry will get solved using these. So you don't need to go to reinforcement learning, right? Because you don't need this, but 
if your goal is to make uh, to get into artificial intelligence you definitely need to know know that so what you have in supervised and unsupervised learning is you're just in unsupervised learning you're grouping data and in supervised learning you're predicting data but in reinforcement learning what is happening is that you have x and that x is giving you y as output but that output is now being fed into the input of z this is what is the basic concept behind super uh, reinforcement learning you are reinforcing that decision and again corrective actions are happening uh, uh, based on that now what does that mean right let's say you have self driving car now for a self driving car you have you have computer vision there uh, and you have x computer is able to see uh, uh, computer is able to uh, take all the historical data of what does a speed breaker look like so, and you and this compute this uh, car comes across a speed breaker let's say that it comes comes across a speed breaker right and you have all the historical data of speed breakers what they look what they look like and it will categorize why uh, as in classification algorithm it will categorize as speed breaker yes or no speed breaker speed breaker yes or no does this make sense to everyone is this point clear i'm taking an example of reinforce reinforcement learning uh, how is it applied in cell drive car but is only classifying the speed breaker whether it is actually a speed breaker yes or no is enough or do i need to do something else also is only predicting whether it is speed breaker or not enough or do i need to do something else also right is only knowing this is speed breaker enough or do i need to do something else what else do i need to do right very good i need to apply take some action i need to apply brakes who's going to apply brakes right only prediction is not important but what is important is i need to be able to uh, put all of this in z z may be my robot navigation it can be real time decisions it may might be actually applying brakes and this is why where the world is moving towards uh, uh, reinforcement learning and that's why i believe reinforcement learning is going to uh, just change the face of humanity the way we see humans the way we see machines uh, when we think about things like terminator when we think like uh, think about things like reinforcement learning etc uh, sorry uh, uh, matrix movies and all uh, this is what is going to drive us towards uh, towards some of these most advanced uh, things maybe they will happen our uh, in our lifetimes maybe they will happen in another 100 200 years but uh, this surely is uh, where uh, the future is right so that is reinforcement learning for you yeah with this uh, let me know if uh, all of these concepts that we did today whether it is supervised unsupervised classification regression uh, reinforcement all of these are clear to you you if you have enjoyed the session and if you found find yourself to be very very confident at least with the very basics of machine learning because my goal was to motivate you to learn machine learning my goal was to help you take away those doubts that you would have whether i'll be able to learn this whether i'll not be able to learn this and whether you whether uh, what, what is the starting point if all of those points are clear to you let me know in the chat window because before i move to the uh, scholarship i will just you know uh, cover one more part which i think a lot of you would have confusion in how many of you have confusion in in the fact that should i learn machine learning data science and ai how many of you are a little confused in that part let me know so that i can clarify that part before moving to the final section which is the scholarship part because this is a very 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 common um, uh, question that uh, that a lot of lot of people newbies especially have and i keep on getting this um, this uh, question the most often this is like if there are 100 questions that are asked this is like at the top of that list right should i learn data science should i learn machine learning or should i learn ai yeah the simple answer is that this is not a or b decision right don't think of data science and machine learning and ai or as a or this whether i should learn this or that it is this and that it is essentially machine learning which is at the heart of both data science and ai 
machine learning is the heart of both data science and ai because in data science you use machine learning for prediction and in ai you use a sub field of machine learning called deep learning if you remember in the beginning i said that this is what uh, my focus area is uh, deep learning is nothing but it's a fancy term for something called neural networks like like machines uh, mimicking human brains like the way we have neurons in our brains machines thinking like human uh, brains that is neural networks for you so a sub field of machine learning called neural networks deep learning is used in artificial intelligence right now when machine is when machine learning is being used to solve a business problem that becomes data science right and it is used to predict something it becomes data science and when machine learning is used to mimic human brain and like and and machines are being made to see like humans think like humans behave in like humans feel like humans that becomes artificial intelligence for you let me know if this part is clear to everyone the difference between data science or and ai right that's one next is i will give you a couple of questions and let me know uh, let me see if you have understood this when for example you are working in uh, say uh, jp morgan and you need to build a machine learning model uh, to predict fraud is this an ai problem or a data science problem you need to build a machine learning model to predict fraud where is the next fraud going to happen right very good it is a data science problem why data science because i am not trying to uh, make a machine see like humans right uh, and and feel like humans right but let's say i build uh, and uh, uh, i build something like amazon alexa is amazon alexa an ai product or is it a data science product right very good now let's take another use case now i am trying to uh, predict if i am in telecom i am trying to predict uh, who will be the next customer who will churn i am doing churn analysis and i am doing trying to predict who will be the next customer who will churn uh, from my network is it a data science problem or is it an ai problem right it is a data science problem now let's say i am in telecom and i build a product uh, that i want to automate my entire bpo because people keep on calling airtel and they ask the same thing and then they ask the same questions and then you have thousands of these people sitting in call centers and i want to integrate amazon uh, alexa or i want to build a chatbot that speaks to customers just like the way humans do what is that product i want to kind of let go of these 10000 people sitting in call center if i am in if i am airtel right it is ai now my question to you guys is that what would excite you more data science or artificial intelligence right and let me see uh, who uh, who is excited about uh, uh, what yeah all right so ai and data science some people are writing both yes the right answer is both of the things are very exciting and uh, i personally i started my journey with data science and now i moved more towards artificial intelligence uh, my suggestion however is that if you are looking to start into this field start with data science do not directly go for artificial intelligence because trust me artificial intelligence is not straight forward artificial intelligence a thing things like deep learning they are not straight forward they are very very complex topics neural networks looks very exciting but is not very easy like the best of the phd's in the world are actually working on artificial intelligence always start with data science data analysis because in artificial intelligence also you need to work with data because you need to feed your machines data if your these concepts are clear in data science analysis and machine learning then the transition from the data science to ai becomes even smoother so do not directly start with artificial intelligence start with data science over a period of time as you become better and better you will start uh, uh, liking ai even more this, did this clarify things for everyone yes or no what should i start with ai or data science start with data science because that's where i believe that the best people are those who firstly focus on the basics do not go by the buzzwords focus on the basics if your basics of data science are clear if the basics of data analysis machine learning algorithms is clear ai is not going to be difficult 
But if you straight away jump into artificial intelligence, it's going to look like, oh God, what have I my gotten into? It's like a lot of lot of maths and it's lot of lot of programming and it's 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 very complicated for me. Yeah. All right. So with this, let's move to the final uh, section of uh, today's uh, uh, session, which is uh, scholarship. Now, how many of you are now uh, looking forward to transition into data science and machine learning and you've gotten that clarity from this two day session? Let me know if today's session and yesterday's session gave you that clarity and if you have finally uh, uh, made up your mind that this is something that uh, uh, now I have clarity upon and possibly you've been thinking about it for months, but finally after attending this two day session, you have gotten a lot of lot of clarity. And if you would want to continue your journey into machine learning, uh, uh, machine learning and data science from here on also, let me know in, let me know so that I can move on to the final section, which is the scholarship part, because these scholarships part, these scholarships are designed for working professionals like you, and they help people like you who are, who are talented, who are ambitious, and who want to now move away from low cost outsourcing work and who don't want to do testing or mainframe or Java or, or, or things or things like that and want to move towards next generation technologies like data science, uh, machine learning and uh, uh, and AI. Uh, these scholarships are for those. Uh, we have reserved a couple of scholarship for, for, for uh, today's and yesterday's webinar attendees. I would want to talk about that. But before that, let me just uh, uh, ask uh, a quick question. Uh, how many of you have already gone through the brochure and downloaded the syllabus of the GCD program because these scholarships are applicable on the GCD program. Um, let me know if you have already gone through the brochure, downloaded, visited the website and uh, uh, gone through the curriculum and the detailed brochure. Right? Yes, 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 yes. All right, great. So uh, those of you, some of you are writing no. I've not done that yet. So let me just help you what these scholarships are. Uh, these scholarships are coming from a 15 crore fund that we have established with uh, the goal to attract the brightest uh, folks out there in the industry and to also uh, fund our student startups uh, uh, in machine learning and AI space. Uh, since we have some of the best people uh, working in this uh, uh, space, we provide funding up to 20 lakhs plus uh, network community and support, but that startup has to obviously be in the machine learning and AI space. It cannot be just a random startup. Uh, plus it is to attract uh, talented professionals with potential to become data leaders of tomorrow through this inside vision uh, scholarship. Uh, we are providing up to 70% tuition waiver on two of our programs called uh, Global Certificate in Data Science and the, and the Global Certificate in Data Science and Artificial Intelligence, right? Now, let me help you understand why this pro these programs are very different and how they can help you at this point in your career because what is more important is how these two programs can help you at this point in your career. So the goal of these two programs is um, uh, as I mentioned yesterday is not to just make you a data scientist and machine learning expert, but like the way we learned yesterday and today, the goal is to make you think beyond the normal. The goal is to make you connect the dots so that you are able to build products, lead departments, create companies and get better paying jobs and essentially get into your dream companies. That's what the vision of the program is to produce data leaders of tomorrow. Currently, there are approximately 1000 plus uh, students enrolled across uh, four batches. January is going to be fifth batch and every company, one of the biggest strengths of the inset community is any company that you can think of uh, and any profile that you can think of. We have students from almost all top IT services companies, whether it is Accenture, IBM, TCS, Wipro, Infosys, HCL, plus all the big four, uh, uh, big four uh, companies, plus product companies like, like Microsoft, and a lot of lot of students from financial services companies, whether it be Barclays, uh, Wells Fargo, Credit Suisse, J.P. Morgan, Morgan Stanley, etc., etc. Right. So these two programs are designed for working professionals like you who do not have the time to go through a rigorous program by quitting your job, 
but rather you would want to have your job and at the same time you would want to go through a rigorous program which takes you in a step by step way towards helping you transition into a data science and a machine learning role now how does this help you this helps this the gcd program helps you in five different ways let me just you know speak a little bit about the first way in which the gcd program is designed for you which is rigorous uh, uh, curriculum now let me ask you a question how many you have how many of you have this doubt whether uh, a company will or whether i will be able to transition into a data science and machine learning role with 5 or 10 years of experience or 15 years of experience uh, will i be considered as a fresher will i be will i be uh, at par will i be able to uh, kind of trans make the transition happen let me know in the chat window if that's something that's in your mind uh, especially with uh, say your current experience you might have uh, that 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 question or uh, those doubts right so um, uh, i 18 years non it yes 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 absolutely i have that in mind so always remember that if your basics in any field are very very strong as i keep on saying that if your basics are very strong you have good communication skills you know how to package and position yourself and you can relate what you're getting into with what you have already done then transitioning into any field is not going to be difficult my favorite quote is uh, my favorite quote is that aliens are not getting into data science and machine learning it is people like you with 5 10 15 years of experience who are getting into data science and machine learning the first step of that journey however is that going through uh, going through a program which has a very rigorous curriculum which prepares you for making that transition happen right here's one of our uh, student uh, from honda who says uh, who says uh, a little bit about the program that i went through uh, many offline and online classes but the inset gcd is completely different now why it is different let's uh, look at uh, the program structure in a little more detail way so that you have more idea about how this uh, how it can help you at this point in your career so the program is structured in a term fashion uh, you have various terms term 1 term 2 term 3 and each term has a specific objective for example term 1 is all about getting your basics right it is all about the very basics of statistics just like the way we discussed in the two day session and making you comfortable with python programming and what you will also learn is data manipulation packages like numpy pandas etc in the first term the second term you will move towards data visualization remember in yesterday session we what we had discussed we had discussed about data summarization and uh, uh you we had discussed about uh how presenting data stories is very very important do you guys remember that from yesterday session that data stories is very very important when it is uh, uh when it comes to presentation in this uh term you will learn data visualization how to visualize data through histograms scatter plots um through heat maps and you'd also learn how to do exploratory data analysis as a data scientist a lot of your time will go in this exploratory data analysis and this is something that you will be mastering in term 2 this will happen in one month duration each of these terms then term 3 is where you start building the foundation and you would see the way the program is structured it is does not start directly with machine learning like 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 a lot of other programs do uh, that initially directly you move to machine learning because as i mentioned some time back mastering data is very important the first two terms if you are comfortable with this machine learning is going to be a cake walk after that right so you learn with the very basics of machine learning and machine learning foundation and after that you have and some of the algorithms like linear regression logistic regression decision trees how to evaluate machine learning algorithms etc after that you have you have a break and you work on a minor project so this minor project is a, an end to end project that you work on after that the cdf people drop off from here uh, and they complete their program which is over a period of 3 months and the gcd people uh, and gcd ai students continue on their journey after this in term 4 you learn machine learning intermediate and here you learn the intermediate level levels of machine learning something which will start making you a data leader 
because only knowing the basics of machine learning is not important the industry wants you to be an expert in machine learning and that's what will start happening in term 4 which is machine learning intermediate term in term 5 you have machine learning advanced which is elective 1 now if you want to specialize in machine learning and this is the reason that why this term is my favorite term which is elective term that if you want to specialize in machine learning right you have you you should take machine learning foundation intermediate and machine learning advanced it will make you the best out there but some of you would want to potentially take r also along with python since the most of the program is based on python you would want to add r also to your toolkit you can take r also as an elective and those of you who are fans of data visualization like the way i am uh, the, i believe the data visualization is something uh, which is a very very underutilized skill you can take elective 3 which is data visualization with tableau after this in term 6 you have capstone project in which you work on an end to end product and solution and you push this product and solution to production using live servers right that we will provide you live sql servers and you integrate this using uh, using scripting technologies and this is a faculty guided team project so you'll be working in a team and this will be you'll be guided a faculty uh, by a faculty in this in this particular term which is a capstone project for data science now based on this i would want you guys to think a little bit and let me know in the chat window in term 5 which is elective term which is the term that you would want to take and why right ml advanced or number one data and elective one elective two elective three you can just write one two or three elective one or two or three so that you have more clarity about um, the more you write the more clarity you start getting about which is the right term for you right machine learning advanced elective three uh, how about uh, elective two right Okay, so I see most of the people opting for elective uh, elective one and elective three, but uh, good enough. So some people want to go for two as well. Yeah. Uh, now this is where the term. This is the interesting term, which is term five, because here uh, people who want to get into artificial intelligence start moving, making a move towards AI. So they don't take any of these terms, right? They move, start moving towards. They start moving towards. Uh, artificial intelligence in this in this uh, term and they we recap the very basics of uh, AI and what you, what happens after that is in term seven you start totally totally focusing on uh, artificial intelligence and as I said the reason this is so well structured is that you learn data analysis data science and machine learning basics here and then when you move towards AI it is not difficult for you at all to master this you learn the world's number one platform for AI called uh, TensorFlow and Keras, right? Which is a wrapper on top of TensorFlow. Um, you learn both of this in term seven. In term eight, you learn deep learning foundation. As I said, deep learning is something which is very, very important. And you learn some of the algorithms like convolution neural networks, recurrent neural networks, etc. in deep learning foundation. And in term nine, you learn NLP right which is natural language processing right so as i mentioned some time back if you want to build something like siri something like alexa etc you would need nlp here and term 10 this is uh, my area of specialization called computer vision it comes at the very end but possibly is the most exciting thing because this as i said is going to define the his, uh, future of uh, humanity called computer vision uh, you here you learn how to implement deep learning frameworks for computer vision this is the most advanced curriculum in ai being offered by any institution in india and that's what the vision with inset started with that uh, that uh, there needs to be cutting edge curriculum and that's the reason that uh, this is that advanced in curriculum and in term 11 you get to specialize either in nlp2 or computer vision 2 uh, depending on what you want to go for and in the end you have a capstone project for AI after 11 months so GCD AI essentially moves in a step-by-step -step way and is for you if you're looking to learn both data science and AI now uh, before I move to the registration part uh, how your learning actually goes on all the classes happen on the weekends 
mainly there might be a few classes a few terms wherein you'll have uh, classes on weekday evening for example wednesday uh, 9 pm or something of that sort all the classes are recorded and the recordings are uploaded on the inside learning center during the week you have access to teaching assistants we have a dedicated research team and teaching assistant teams who help you out during the during the week and we have a very 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 library lively discussion forums i'll show you the community that at inside why it is super super powerful that helps you uh, uh, remain connected and motivated because the important thing here is that when you want to learn something like data science or machine learning you always want to be a part of a community that has the same goal same mission as you do otherwise within 15 days you'll get demotivated and you'll leave that stuff and that's what uh, that's what you'll get uh, here at uh, inset here's one of the one of our students from uh, the earliest batches in august says uh, uh, so De declan works as a senior technical lead at hcl what he says is that uh, mentoring and interactive way of learning and after class discussion at the end of each class your mics are enabled so that you can have a free wheeling discussion with the faculty right now i cannot enable your mic because your, there are too many people here and it will be an absolute chaos it will be an absolute chaos if i uh, enable the mic but in the classes you will have your mics enabled so that you can actually have a two-way discussion and some of the people what they say is the best part about the classes is the after class discussions with the faculty yeah I will talk about the global certification, but let me just, you know, help you figure out uh, the right program uh, for you because some of you might be a little confused still uh, about the right program, which is the right program for you. Yeah. And after that, I will ask you the, uh, which is, which is the program, which is right for you. And let me see if uh, you've been able to select the right program for you. So essentially, if your goal is just to get your feet wet into the field of data science, and your goal is that I just want to continue in testing or, uh, or uh, Oracle or SAP or whatever current technology that you're work, working on. And I want to have these skills on my resume. If you're doing it for your resume and just for a little bit of learning, then CDF is the right program for you. That you just want to get your feet wet without actually thinking a lot about career transition. Then CDF is for you because it's just for three months, right duration. Uh, and the right time. If your goal is to make a transition into machine learning and data science and you, are, you know that this is where the future is and you would better move into these fields now than getting late, then this is the program for you. This is the most popular program that we have uh, wherein approximately 60 to 70 percent of our students are enrolled in. It's spread for over six terms and just for the right amount of time, six months, because I believe that you cannot master data science and machine learning. You cannot become a machine learning expert in one or two months. You need six to seven months. This is the program for you. But if your goal is to learn both data science and AI and be one of those people who have skills in DS plus AI, and that's why your job opportunities are going to really, really, really kind of skyrocket, and you can dedicate 11 months to learning all of this, then this is the program that you should look at because this is a program that where there is sure shot guarantee that you will be able to transition into a data science and machine AI space because you'll be connected in the classes with your peers, with faculty, with me, with, with a lot of, lot of other support staff as well to make that transition happen. And, and the best part is since you learn everything from machine learning to computer vision, your job uh, opportunities open tremendously uh, in the job market, right? With this, let me know which program now, I hope I would have given clarity, which program did you now realize is the right program for you? CDF, GCD, or GCD AI? GCD, 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 GCD AI, uh, GCD, uh, nobody for CDF, right? Uh, GCD, 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 or X. Everybody wants to go for GCD, yeah? Uh, very good. Uh, so I think that GCD is something that most people want to start with. And the good news is that, that you have this option that you can take a transfer from CDF to GCD and you can take a transfer from GCD to GCD AI as well. So that flexibility is also there. So you can start with 
one program and later take an upgrade to the other program at a later point of time so the goal is to make it as flexible and as student friendly for you guys so that it becomes uh, super easy for uh, for you guys uh, to be able to upgrade uh, the program fee for each of the program is uh, this uh, uh, for cdf for gcd and gcdi the program fee is uh, obviously different uh, but through the inset vision scholarship the fee becomes very very affordable um uh you you have the cdf program for 29 you have gcd program for 59 and you have the gcd ai program for 89 so what this means is that you attend one year, one year almost of lectures at uh, almost a 70% tuition waiver at 89000 the goal is for us is to attract the brightest people brightest professionals like you uh to the program so that the class discussions are more 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 and more enriching but the eligibility for these uh these scholarships and tuition waiver is you need to have at least 2 years of ex experience number one and you need to fill up a scholarship form you need to have at least 2 years of scholar uh, uh, um, uh experience and you need to fill up the scholarship form right so i will take it uh, for i will just open up the registrations for you but one quick questions and through which you will be able to register for these programs with just uh, 3000 you don't have to pay the full fee right now you can register for the gcd cdf or the gcd ai program with just 3000 one question that uh, I, that is coming is that uh, what if i want to upgrade from gcd i to gc gcd to gcd i later do i only pay the difference in the fee uh, yes so this scholarship is getting applied to your profile not to the program let me repeat to the profile not to the program so you can take a transfer from this by just paying the difference and transfer to this by just paying the difference that's the um, that's that that's that flexibility is always there right with this let me just you know take you to the registration page and uh, you can register for the gcd program through this webinar exclusive uh, uh, scholarship we have reserved these scholarship 10 of these scholarships for today's uh, webinar and today since this is the last day this is the last opportunity for you guys i i'm a lot of you have already registered for these scholarships yesterday for the program start uh, for yesterday those of you missed out yesterday uh this is the opportunity that you have right so if you want to for example go for gcd you just select gcd and then you would be able to give your name here right so uh you would give your name email address and you select your batch selecting the right batch is very important if you want to go for january 5th just go for january 5th since january 5th is just starting almost 4 weeks 5 weeks from now there are very few seats left in january 5th so make sure that uh, if you're looking to especially join january 5th this is the program this is you register right away and february uh, second we we have quite a few seats left so seats should not be a problem in the in the in the feb february batch uh, registrations for the january batch have been open for the last 2 months so that's why uh we have very very few seats left in the january uh, batch but if you prefer going for february there are a lot of seats left or uh, not a problem with that yeah uh once you have done that you will be able to reserve your seat with the scholarship and this fee also that you are paying will get deducted from the final fee that you have to pay right so this fee is not apart from the final fee that you have to pay this will get deducted from the final fee that you have to pay so you here you would be able to select net banking options whatever you want or credit card emi options we have emi we have tie ups with all the major major uh, companies credit card companies and you can start your program at whatever fee you want i mean at and it will get converted into emi options so you can select emi options from here itself yeah so uh go ahead and sign up for the gcd and gcd ai program take out your debit card credit card or if you have net if you prefer doing net banking you can do that as well and uh, the link is active now and the link will be active for the next uh, 20 minutes till the till the time the session goes on it's uh 1236 the link will be active uh till 1 o'clock uh so make sure that you have reserved your seat for the upcoming gcd gcd ai cohorts and if you have any questions if you face any difficulty right now uh let me know your uh let me know your questions and 
I am there to help you with your questions and Vikas is also there to help you with your questions in the chat window. Yeah. All right. So the link is active now and uh, you can uh, go ahead and uh, register yourself for the GCD and the GCDI program. Okay. Uh, one quick question uh, uh, as I, as I guessed that is coming is that uh, what are the class timings? The classes, as I said, happen on the weekends. Uh, the classes will happen either on weekend morning, 8 to 10. Say term 1 will happen on 8 to 10. Term 2 will happen, say, 11 to 1. So it will happen mostly on the weekends. But there might be some terms, the later terms, in which the cl one class is happening on the weekend, say, 8 to 10, Sunday. And another class will happen on the weekday, say, 9 to 11 p.m. Uh, on Wednesday. So the goal is to keep it super convenient for everyone so that uh, everyone is does not miss out on the classes and you have you get sufficient time uh, to uh, practice as well. Yeah. Okay, so here's what happens after you register now uh, using this 70% tuition waiver funded by the Inset Vision Fund uh, from December 3rd to the program start date you'll go you'll have to go through a mandatory five week uh, GCD pre program prep. Going through this pre-program prep is mandatory uh, because this pre-program prep will prepare you for uh, for uh, starting your program on January 5. Uh, this is super, super important and mandatory. If you do not do this uh, seriously, uh, you will be transferred to the next batch. Uh, the deadline to complete, once you have registered your seat today, the deadline to complete your scholarship application is, uh, is 1st of December and the deadline to complete this, uh, the remaining fee also is 1st of December. Make sure that by 1st of December, both the steps are completed. You complete your scholarship application and the remaining fee payment is also done by, uh, by 1st of December. Uh, it is 26 for CDF. This is after the 3K that, has, that you are paying today to reserve your seat and scholarship and the for GCD it is 56 and for C GCD AI it is 86 and this the GCD AI fee can be paid in two installments so you can break it down into two installments uh, that that's fine one installment will be uh, now uh, by December 1st and the second will be January 1st yeah and as I said you have credit card EMI options available on all the all the program fee so you can go for EMI option as well and January 5th is when the program commences and why the January batches are always special is this is the time when uh, the new the year begins. You have an entire clean slate and you do not have any distractions and you start the program with full energy with full dedication and you are achieve, able to achieve your career goal uh, um, uh, uh, by, by, by the middle or the end of the year. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Okay, uh, so Ashwath has a question. If we were to get scholarship, we'll be paying the full amount out, just the scholarship amount. So when you get the scholarship, this 70% tuition waiver, first of all, you need to be eligible for it. That you that is, you need to have at least two years of experience to be able to to be avail to be able to avail this, and you need to complete your scholarship application. You will get the scholarship, which is 70% tuition waiver, and the fee that you will be paying will be the fee uh, will be this with will, will, will be this uh, uh, fee only which is 26000 56000 and 86000 yeah okay uh, uh, somebody has a question what if we uh, uh, don't get the scholarship no as long as you have two years of uh, scholarship two years of experience as long as you have some work experience more than two years you get your scholarship don't worry about that this is a guaranteed scholarship right Okay. Next is if there is no experience, no, then this scholarship is not for you. Uh, Harish, if there is no experience, this is not for you. Uh, this is, uh, this is, um, this is not for you. If you don't have two years of experience, the goal is to take uh, mature working uh, professionals, uh, tech professionals uh, in, in this program so that we can actually help them with career transition. Otherwise, College students, we find them they are very difficult to very difficult to groom, and secondly, uh, uh, they don't fit into the typical data scientist uh, work profile. So it uh, so so that's why there's minimum eligibility for the scholarships. Yeah, okay. 
so the link is active now you can go ahead and register yourself for the upcoming programs all the programs start on january 5th you have the option again for gcd a gcd program as well you have january 5th option that you have you can select january 5th for gcd cdf or gcd ai whichever program you want to go for yeah all right uh, let me take some questions and after that i'll uh, uh, move to the next uh, win next program uh, next 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 part yeah now uh, the next question is yeah so let me talk a little bit about the how many of you would want me to talk about the certification and the career assistance part because that's something that i've not covered let me know very quickly if you would want me to talk a little bit about that because that's something that personally uh very important to me and something that i'm sure a lot of you would be interested in as well yeah okay so uh, the career assistance so most of you want to know about the career assistance so let me talk a little bit about uh, what makes the gcd program different all the six terms in the gcd program and the gcdi program in each term we'll be bringing one expert from around the world silicon valley uk israel philippines india to interact with you in the classroom so what that helps you do is uh, it helps you give global exposure that you are attending classes from some of the best faculty in the classes right so but you are also need inputs about what is happening around the world so that your perspectives are broadened and you are able to crack jobs much much faster you are able to build companies much much faster you are able to reach uh, to the head of analytics level a uh, bed or data science uh, positions much much faster and that's what we will be doing in each term uh, for example in september we brought a computer vision startup from silicon valley though that's doing tremendous uh, stuff uh, in computer vision stuff uh, in area um, in december we are bringing a lot of these experts from london from india we are bringing bringing the head of uh, machine learning and ai uh, from reliance geo uh we are bringing a london based based uh, uh data scientists also to the program so essentially the goal is to give you that exposure that you would you will need uh if you're looking to transition into data science and machine learning and that's what one of the biggest usps of the program is that we not only teach you you only don't learn in the classroom but you also get to learn from a lot of lot of thought leaders beyond the classroom hours what you will also get is you will get a once you have cleared all the submitted all the projects and all the you have cleared the final certification exam you will get a you you will get a certificate that will look like this and you can you will get a unique certification id if anybody wants to validate this unique certification whether you have actually done the certification uh, they can validate it with us using this unique certification id you get this unique certification id uh, and you will get the certificate like this once you have success, successfully completed and success, the certificate which is uh, which is signed when once you have successfully completed all the terms and you have submitted all the projects project submission is mandatory because we believe that if you are doing your project submission properly cracking jobs is not going to be difficult and you can add the certificate uh, to your linkedin profile we'll provide you the uh, code for that so that you are able to add this to your linkedin profile and to other profiles get up profiles as well yeah all right so uh, finally comes the most important part now my question here is how many of you are looking to do uh, learn data science and machine learning because you want to upskill and if you are lo looking for a transition then type in transition if you are looking to upskill type in upskill and with this uh, let me just welcome a couple of people but let me know if you are looking to upskill or if you are looking to transition because i want to know the objective of each one of you and what i mean by transition is you are possibly right now in testing and you want to get into data science or an upskill means you are in say java and you want to continue in java but you want to just you know learn it uh, so that you are not you are you are not outdated you are you are in demand as well yeah most of you are here for um, a transition but some of you want to do uh, upskilling for upskilling people this is this might not be very helpful but for those of you who are looking to transition you would absolutely love this because we have uh, you will get access to something which is very very special called insight career center 
what NSAID Career Center does for you is that uh, it closes the gap. Right now, for example, if you are here, right, and you want to get somewhere else, yeah, and you want to get here, and right now, for example, you are a test developer, and you want to become a machine learning expert, or you want a job as a machine learning scientist or a data scientist. Now, that cannot happen overnight series of things that you need to do to actually get there right so for example you need to have number one a great resume which is tailor made for you you need to have a great github profile which reflects your data science expertise in the right way you need to have a linkedin profile that showcases your projects in the right way you need to you need to be aware about the trends which is very, very important. You need to know about what questions will be asked in the interview. And more importantly, you would need, six point is you would need a reference in companies. How many of you feel that reference is the best way to get selected in uh, a particular company? If you apply on, um, if you apply uh, separately uh, to a company, your resume possibly will not be even uh, uh, get shortlisted. But if you're going through reference, your resume chances of your resume getting shortlisted become very very good right and what you would be getting is that you will be any company that you want, would want a referral at you will provide your referral at every company right because referrals greatly increase your chances of selection what that means is that if right now uh, you want uh, you are in accenture and you want to move to microsoft we already have students at Microsoft who are working as project managers, senior developers, etc. Right? You don't need to worry about that. If you are, for example, right now working at JP Morgan, right, and you want to move to Citibank, right, we already have multiple students working at different levels in Citibank. So, what the GCD program, how this is different from any other program, is that we have a very, very, very strong community uh, that keeps on supporting each other. And uh, you want a referral in every any company, or uh, you have a referral at uh, uh, at these companies, right? Okay. So uh, the link is active, guys. Uh, it's ten minutes to go. It's uh, as I mentioned, the, this link will uh, go. This this link uh, is active till the time the session is active till one o'clock. Uh, we are taking your questions. Make sure that if you have any question that is not answered, uh, 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 you have posted your question and uh, we will take your question right now some soma has a question uh, what is the fee for gcd program after applying scholarship yeah very good uh, i've already covered that but let me just show you it a little bit more uh, what is the fee of the gcd program um, i think i've already covered that where is the slide here it is this the regular fee for the GCD and the CDF and the GCD AI program is uh, one, two, and three lakhs, right? But right now, uh, through this Inset Vision Scholarship, uh, you you get a seventy percent tuition waiver, and this is a limited fund, and we cannot guarantee whether this scholarship will be available in future because right now, earlier this uh, when we are giving out these scholarship, the scholarship value was even higher. It was 75%, now it is 70%, it will soon go down, go down to 50%, right? So use, uh, 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 so, so uh, go to, uh, so, so basically uh, this scholarship keeps on decreasing with time uh, as the fund keeps on getting exhausted. And the fee is written here anyway, uh, GCD AI after scholarship is 89, GCD after scholarship is 59, and CDF after uh, scholarship is uh, is uh, 29, right? And the whole reason that we have kept the CDF fee uh, so low is after scholarship is that we believe that a lot of people uh, do not uh, go for career transitions or do not take those big leaps in their career because they always feel education is an expense. Whereas education over a period of time, you would, you would know it better, is an investment that you make in your in your future when you're buying phones it's an expense but when you're investing your education it will give and give you back even more money but some of the people might not realize that so uh, the cdf program exactly is uh, for uh, people who want to start with a low risk low investment kind of uh, uh, plan and uh, they start with three months 
and later they would want to move to GCD uh, and later they would want to move to GCD, right? So uh, CDF is totally fine if that's your plan, uh, but GCD is where most of the program, most of the students uh, actually get enrolled in. Yeah. All right. Uh, now the uh, what will be the strength of uh, each batch? Uh, is there any uh, accreditation or the certification? Right. Okay. Very good questions. Uh, here. Uh, so for, for first of all, I would want to quickly show you the uh, what what is the strength of the GCD network? If you guys see here, this is our forum uh, community dot and this is the forum where you will be interacting with your with your, with your other students as well, right? Uh, which is uh, uh, which is across the batches. So, for example, you would see that there is a group going on for Delhi NCR data scientist student. And these are all our students uh, enrolled um, enrolled in batches, right? Uh, this is all our students in uh, the number batch. Similarly, there are groups for Pune, there are groups for Mumbai, there are groups for Chennai as, as well. If you want to see detailed introductions of our students, and you would see, you'd be you'd be amazed to see the uh, profiles of uh, some of the students. They are just like you, who are looking to transition into uh, data science and machine learning. Uh, for example, let me just you know show you. Uh, yeah, um, uh, we have uh, uh, people from uh, yeah. Uh, we have people from IIMs, we have people from IITs, we have people who are working as uh, senior directors, we have people uh, who have 10, 15 or 20 years of experience, for example, uh, Pankaj Patel uh, with 16 years of experience. And then we have, uh, we have people who are just three or five years of experience as well. So there is no one fit for GCD student. There are all kind of students from SAP background, from from Oracle testing, ETL uh, backgrounds, essentially all of these students are connected with one single mission that they want to be prepared for uh, future, right? For example, Arun is uh, one of our earlier students uh, currently enrolled in the November batch. Arun works as a software development manager at Oracle, right? Uh, is based out of the Bangalore office. Similarly, you have uh, uh, you have a lot of students who are from companies like uh, Oracle, uh, uh, Oracle, Microsoft as well, right? So uh, what you get to do is you get to build a very, very strong network with people who are uh, who are just in your age category, who are who uh, are interested in uh, taking their careers forward and who are looking at upscaling in this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ashwath has a question. Suppose I choose CDF now with scholarship and later I choose to upgrade to GCD. How much will I have to pay? Uh, Ashwat, as, as I had already answered, you just have to pay the difference in the fee. So you start with say 29,000 right now, you just have to pay the difference in fee between 59,000 and 29,000, which is 30,000. So the scholarship is getting applied to a profiles. Our goal through the scholarship is to keep uh, freshers away from the program and to at least have some commonality between the between the students right uh, so that's the goal of these uh, scholarships to make it uh, super super easy for uh, all of you right so you can start with cdf and later take uh, an upgrade to gcd it's not a problem at all now with this let me just you know welcome uh, uh, welcome all those of you who have registered now and i would love if each one of you who have registered can introduce yourself in the chat window, let me just welcome Ravi Malela, welcome Ravi, uh, welcome Vamshi, welcome Amit, welcome uh, uh, Shiva, uh, welcome uh, Dinesh, welcome Prabhit, Prab Prabhit, if I'm not wrong, right? Uh, so welcome everyone to the GCD cohorts and I would love to know from you which plan, which cohort are you planning to join? Are you planning to join the uh, January cohort and CDF or GCD or the uh, uh, February cohort. Yeah, Anshu has a question. When should we pay the difference amount if we are upgrading? Anshu, that's one of the things that we would want is uh, give you all the power is here at inside in not in our hand. It is in your hands. We are the facilitators of this great program. If you want to upgrade to GCD, in the first month, you can. If you want to upgrade to CDF in the second month, you can. 
if you want to upgrade it later also you can does that does that some seem helpful um, anshu that does that answer your uh, question whenever you feel ready you make that you take that decision if you don't feel ready you then don't take that uh, uh, decision right if you feel that whatever you want to learn in the field of data science and machine learning you have learned in cdf and the program was great for you but you would want to end your journey you can do that as well yeah but uh, but gcd is what i believe uh, is the program that will prepare you to a very very strong level a uh, cdf is just for the fundamentals because uh, you learn only the fundamentals here uh, of data analysis and machine learning but uh, gcd is uh, the program that you should be actually looking at yeah okay uh, next is uh, do i need to pay any fee for upgradation so you just need to pay a course upgrade fee of 3000 rupees uh, whenever you want to decide uh, you want to do an upgrade uh, rest you don't have to pay the full fee you just pay the difference uh, uh, dif difference between the two fee yeah okay om has a question uh, uh, can i take a gap after ctf and later uh, for g and upgrade for gcd absolutely om you can do that as well it's not a problem at all right from time to time you'll keep on getting uh, emails for upgrade whenever you would want to take the plunge you can upgrade uh, at that time does that seem uh, does this seem helpful yeah all right uh next is so so the link is active now we are just you know closing the session in another 2 minutes uh uh if you uh, if we are closing the session in another 2 minutes if you guys have not been able to register make sure that you are registered now uh because uh, it's 2 minutes to go type wait in the chat window if you would want me to wait otherwise i will start wrapping up the session i will just start closing the session uh if you have not been able to register using the scholarship uh 70% tuition waiver let me know so that i can wait for you otherwise i will uh, uh start closing the session right okay um can you talk a little bit okay wait wait uh manish writes wait okay uh ashwath right can you please wait bhaskar writes wait uh, uh vibhit writes wait manoj writes wait right all right i'll just wait for a couple of minutes more so make sure that you have reserved your seat anyway this fee is going to be deducted from the final fee so you don't have to worry that you have to pay right now 3000 and then the full fee right so this is included in the final fee so you don't need to worry about that yeah um next question is uh is this fee refundable this is anyway a very small fee that uh, this reservation fee 3000 is a very small reservation fee so this is not a refundable fee but this can be adjusted against the this is adjustable against the full fee that you are paying uh, so uh, that that's that's the uh, uh, that's the fee that you are paying right now yeah okay uh, another question is uh, can you talk a little bit about gcd ai program right um how many of you want to know a little bit more about gc uh, for gcd ai uh, i have not spent a lot of time most of my time time has gone in gcd how many of you would want me to talk a little more more about um, gcd ai when to pay remaining money for pev batch the deadlines are the same uh, the deadlines for uh, Uh, let me just you know um, help you with the deadline okay the deadlines are the same for both january and february batch the reason is simple because these scholarships right now with 3000 we are just holding and reserving your seat and scholarship for you but this is not a guarantee that you will actually get a scholarship after after uh, one month right so you, the deadline remains the same irrespective of whether you want to go for january batch or whether you want to go for february batch right so whether you want to go for january or february the deadline remains the same for for the batch right and it should not be a problem because once you uh, complete both the steps as in you you're completing your scholarship application and once you're completing uh, the remaining fee payment for uh, uh, january batch or february batch the rest of the things remain the same yeah okay uh i want to go for gcdi but right now i can't afford gcdi so uh how can i uh, go for gcdi the simple answer is don't go for gcdi if you can't go for gcdi right now start with gcd 
or bare minimum you can start with cdf i'm sure cdf is after the tuition waiver cdf is something that everybody can afford right everybody if you're if you're working right you can afford and that too we are giving you emi options so it should not be difficult at all yeah so this is something that uh, uh, you can start with gcd is something that you can start it and later you can think about gcdi but if you want, if you're sure about uh, going for gcdi uh, i would recommend you to go ahead and enroll yourself in the gcdi program yeah next question is uh, uh, we are unable to select february batch in uh, in in uh, the application uh, are you sure because i can select february batch uh, do you see here that i i'm able to select february batch february 2nd 2019 yeah and for cdf also it's i'm sure it will be coming february 2nd 2019 so i'm able to select uh, but i'm not sure if uh, there is any issue um, uh, which batch are you talking about um, i'm not sure what what exactly are you referring to uh, but even if uh, for any reasons if you are so even if you are not able to select uh, uh, february not a problem uh, we will manually map it to february in case you are still facing any issue so select january 5 and the next step will be that in the coming week on monday in fact tomorrow you will get a call from our academic services and admissions team you will get a call from madhur tiwari who is our senior admissions officer madhur will guide you with all these steps you don't need to worry right so we will manually change your batch from january to february right in case uh, you are not able to select that so uh, madhur will help you with the next steps uh, in terms of uh, uh, how to complete the scholarship application and uh, how to make the remaining fee payment right so uh, don't worry about that that will be taken care of yeah okay next is uh, uh, what uh, what do i do in december that's a very good question but uh, with that let me also give you a time alert it's 1 3 i hope uh, bhaskar has i see that bhaskar has registered but the rest of the people um, uh, who who asked me to wait can you guys finish your registration fast so that uh, we can close the uh, session because i've been speaking non stop for the for the last 2 uh, hours right and uh, i want to be sure that uh, we are finishing on time uh, so that uh, you guys can also uh, uh leave and have a great sunday yeah so once you complete both the steps both the uh, scholarship application and once you complete uh, the remaining fee payment you will get access to starter kit now what the starter kit includes is that you will get access to python starter kit python starter kit will help during entire month of december and those of you who are going for january you will practice python basics all these python basics will help you become really really good at python so if you have any fear of programming this will take away all your fear of programming you don't need to worry about uh, the fact that you don't know programming and you, whether you know programming etc right what our endeavor is we spent a lot of lot of time in recording each one of the videos in making each one material for the starter kit and the whole goal people love our students love these starter kit is that the november batch which started uh, uh, last week uh, they had gotten access to the starter kit long time back right in in september itself so from september itself they had started their preparation and you can go through the starter kit as many times as you want so if you want to go through it once go through it once go through it twice go through it thrice you can record uh, you can uh, you stop the video and watch it as many times as you want and similarly once you have your class recording so for example here is the statistics uh, recording so you will be able to uh, uh, get your basics right in statistics uh, even before the program uh, uh, program starts so this helps us bring all the students at the same level during the program and that is something which is very very important to us yeah okay uh next question let me know uh, uh ashwath writes registered bharat writes registered uh all right so in, is anyone not been able to register let me know in the chat window otherwise uh, i will wind up the session i will leave you guys with my with our coordinate so that you can reach out to the admissions team uh in the coming uh, week uh five people welcome uh Uh, five people are in the process. 
uh, I'm getting this. Yeah, let me just see. Yeah. So uh, these are our coordinates. Uh, so make sure that uh, you reach out to us at these uh, these email address. Admissions at inset.co is our email address to reach out to the student services team uh, or to reach out to for any questions anytime if you have any questions reach out to us at admissions at inset.co and if uh, you have uh, uh, if you directly want to talk to the admissions team you can reach out to the admissions team uh, at our phone numbers. Prabit has a question is there any accreditation for this uh, uh, certification right so for any anything right now which is new uh, if you talk about areas like uh, uh, areas like uh, finance marketing there are established bodies for, for something like artificial intelligence which is so new in the market or data science there are no established bodies so we are a self independent institution which are doing our own accreditation of this uh, certification yeah uh, Prabit does that answer your question so what is important is what what exposure you are learning what you're getting and more importantly what you're making out of the program if you are able to do it well then you are you are totally sorted and you should be able to get a lot of lot of uh, uh, insights and 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 more importantly opportunities because at the end what matters is the opportunities uh, that you get and hopefully this program through the network through the faculty and through the learning format that 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 you will go through you will get all those opportunities uh, that you've been wanting yeah okay uh, with that if you have any questions i hope you were, you would have taken a screenshot of this make sure that you take a screenshot of this because this is the email address that you should be reaching out to and uh, madhur from our admissions team will be reaching out to you uh, in, uh, in, in in by tomorrow uh, if you have any further questions, you can reach out to Madhur. And in the coming week, uh, we will be organizing possibly a web scraping session. How many of you would want to attend a web scraping session? Uh, our chief data scientist, Suchit Majumdar, is going to do a web scraping session. Uh, and uh, let's hope that uh, you, 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 uh, uh, we, we see you there in those sessions as well. Yeah. All right, so with this, I'll close the session. Thank you very much. I hope uh, all of you who wanted to register uh, have been uh, able to register, right? And uh, I hope that this two-day training would have proved insightful, helpful, and this two-day training would have helped you see the power of data science and machine learning and how it can actually be used uh, to uh, in real-world context, right? And I hope more importantly that the, uh, that your confusion and all the questions that you had around data science applications how it is used uh, what are the industries what do what what are some of the things that you need to keep in mind i hope all of uh, that would have uh, been clear yeah so uh, last question is from prabit uh, when would we get python uh, toolkit available you would come you would get Python starter kit and statistics starter kit once you have completed both the steps uh, here are the both the steps that I, I showed you Prabhi once you complete this you will get on December 3rd you will get uh, Python and uh, statistics starter kit if you want to complete it before that as well that is also totally fine uh, so uh, Prabhit has a question will I be re receiving any link for remaining uh, fee payment uh, in the email that you would have gotten the welcome uh, email, Prabit, uh, you would have already gotten a link uh, to make the remaining fee payment, right? So if you do it uh, today uh, or tomorrow or whenever you want, immediately the very next day you get access to the starter kit. Prabit, does that make sense? You all the links are already there in the welcome email. You just have to uh, go through it. Yeah. All right. So. Now I'm exhausted, but this session was great uh, because you guys made it super, super interactive. Uh, let's hope that your career transformation journey starts here. And let's hope that uh, you are able to successfully transition into the, into the exciting fields of data science and machine learning. And, uh, and I welcome each one of you who have registered and those of you who still uh, are on the fringes. Let's hope that uh, uh, once you talk to the admissions team in the coming week, uh, you are able to uh, sort out your questions and you, you are able to 
kind of uh, get uh, all your questions clarified right with that i will wind up today's session thank you very much for being uh, so great and interactive look forward to seeing you very soon and let's hope uh, that uh, some of the assignments that i gave you today whether it was about researching about uh, data science applications in your industry you are actually doing that actively right thank you very much and see you very soon uh, take care bye bye